Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you another interview from an industry professional. Today we have Alice Priestley who is an editorial assistant. Alice talks about her 74 friends, how she wants to bring back patchwork denim and gives you advice on not rushing your applications. Hope you find this useful and enjoy. I wish I could save all the animals in the world and just put them on a farm and just coddle them all and just save them all from humans. <laughs> Morbid way to stop video. Uh, yeah, I am vegan and for the animals mostly uh, because I'm a massive softie. But a more realistic thing, uh, one wish I could do but I can't, is cook. I'm useless. <laughs> Chuck stuff in a wok and hope for the best. That's my uh, strategy. Patchwork denim. Where did that go? Oh, when I was about 10 and I remember going to the high street. Remember high streets? And going to Peacock's. Where did Peacock's go? Oh, and got this tiny little patchwork denim bag, which was about yay big. I fit my lip gloss in and my flip phone and that was about it and it had these hideous patchwork denim bits on it, but God, I love the thing. So if that could be uh, resurrected anytime soon, then uh, please make it happen, fashion gods. <laughs> I have been reading this book, um, How to Be a Stoic by Massimo Pigliucci. I have not pronounced that right at all. Um, but I have been reading more Stoic philosophy after reading this and have drawn two main ones from that. Amal Fati and Memento Mori. That first one, I don't know if I pronounced correctly, but there we go. Um, Amal Fati means love fate and love whatever happens, no matter what, because ultimately it will shape you in some way. It will better you in some way. If it's painful, if it's difficult, if it's horrible, it will change you and shape you into ultimately being a better person. So love it, whatever happens, because it's beautiful. It will change you in the best way. And Memento Mori, a little more morbid, as the name suggests. Uh, Memento Mori is essentially a Stoic philosophy that signifies remember your mortality, that you could die at any moment. So make the most of this life. Anything could happen. So live your life to the fullest at every moment. I'm an editorial assistant, which, surprise, surprise, means there's a lot of assisting editorially. <laughs> um, uh, that includes tracking schedules, managing projects, making sure everything goes to print on time, making sure everything that does go to print is in the best um, condition, if you will, possible. So it's all grammatically correct. It's all complementing the publication and involves a lot of coordinating with departments and internal and external people to make sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. So I studied English at Loughborough University. After that, I studied Creative Writing Masters at Loughborough University as well, um, which I finished in September 2017. And I managed to bag an internship at Women's Health magazine for a month in September, um, which interestingly directed me even more into the publishing industry. I didn't want to work with magazines after that uh, as much as I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't for me. So then after that, I started my relentless job search for my first job in publishing. All the objections started coming in and um, I got a bit disheartened and decided that the time wasn't right. So I took myself off travelling the following March and 15 months later, <laughs> came back and started my job search again and miraculously got a job. <laughs> and uh, here I am. Um, I would say it's quite ironic going back to what I was talking about with stoicism and not stressing about things that aren't in your control. But when things are out of my control, it's quite stressful. So when print deadlines are uh, looming and you move past them and it's been weeks and you can't do anything about it because there are holdups in logistics or distribution or production uh, that you can't really do anything about, that's when it gets a little bit uh, stressful. But ultimately 
you can't do anything about it. So you just do as much as you can editorially to try and stay ahead when things do catch up eventually. Yeah, so I started my job in January and sorry, my square, my, my square is very cheeky. My chair is very squeaky. I started working from home in March. So I'd been at my job for about three months in the office. Um, so transitioning to working from home, having started quite early on, uh, was challenging. Um, it's hard to communicate with people and collaborate with creative ideas uh, when you're not in the office and you can just turn around and be like, hey, can you show me how to do this or um, help me with this? So that has been challenging, but you know, um, you learn skills from this either way. Uh, learning how to adapt and be flexible, um, communicate better, ultimately, I think. Yes, I have absolutely worked from my bed before, <laughs> um, although I have the back of a 90-year-old, so it doesn't work for me. Um, generally, God, publishing moves so quickly. If I've learned anything this year with the pandemic is that it moves so quickly and adapts to everything that's happening uh, I just don't know how it happens it's rather overwhelming um but it's always moving and it's always moving very quickly and you have to have your finger on the pulse and just be on it all the time with new ideas what people are interested in um what's happening in the world and how people are perceiving it how people want to maybe cope with it through escapism through books or how they want to learn about it non-fiction how they want to um use their time creatively you know with um, collectibles and it's a relentless machine in the best way in that it just keeps on going no matter what and happily it's thrived this year uh, which you know not many people can say unfortunately but publishing has you know continues to do well how do rights and translation rights and book rights happen like i can't like i imagine there's someone with like a gavel and someone you know it's like an auction mart and there's chaos but like you know like a an a publishing ebay if you will but like how do is there like a bidding war i have so many questions <laughs> you can clearly tell that i have no idea what happens um you know about rights who gets what books on what grounds um is it all about money or is it something more? Um, what is the process? I just have no clue. After editorial assistant, I imagine you either transition to assistant editor, commissioning editor, editor, um, or I don't see why you couldn't transition sideways as well if you wanted to try a different part of the industry. So transitioning into another assistant role um production or audio or rights anything uh because in this world you learn so many transferable skills like communication organization prioritization all of the asians essentially um that you can apply in other roles and once you're sort of in publishing um and it's again easier when you're in the office and you can like you know, learn by osmosis and absorb what's going on around you uh, by the people in various departments. But you pick things up uh, no matter what role you're in. So I don't think it's a bad thing to go sideways either, uh, as well as up. So if you are trying to get your first role or a role as an editorial assistant, Use this wise advice that I saw on LinkedIn, classic LinkedIn, the fountain of wisdom, but actually <laughs> it can be. Uh, quality over quantity, it's as simple as that. Don't rush your applications like I did. I used to, you know, send out, fire out five or six applications a day just thinking like, oh yeah, one of them's bound to get back to me, but no, no. Spend a full day on one application, longer if you can, but not too long. You want to get it in there. Um, you know, spend your time researching the company, why you specifically want to work there. Uh, get your character in there as well. People want to kind of get a, a gist of who you are because they're going to have so many people applying, like hundreds. Uh, so focus on quality over quantity. Don't just copy and paste all your cover letters and change the address. I've done it. <laughs> I can speak for a lot of people and myself. It doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, spend more time on one application rather than a million and thinking that that you know will work because 
the way I got my job is when I started, you know, living by the principle of quality over quantity. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about getting into the industry with job applications, um, with uh, the editorial assistant role, do let me know. I know it can be tiring and a relentless struggle trying to keep applying again and again after rejections and there's even more competition at the moment people are hungrier than ever for this role uh so keep going um every application that you don't get uh, will make your next one better and if you don't get that job then it wasn't meant for you and something is coming your way just keep trying and keep going and good luck <laughs> Okay, here we go. I'm going to bang on about this book again because clearly I haven't done so enough. It's How to Be a Stoic by your boy, Massimo Pigliucci. I love this book. I read it from back to front. I've highlighted the crap out of it and I'm sorry for defacing a book to everyone in publishing, but it's worth it because I just love it. It, it's, it simplifies stoic philosophy, which can feel like a bit of a minefield. Like people say, like, what the hell is that? Um, and stoicism has a bit of a reputation to be, you know, you know, oh, nothing affects you kind of thing. But that's not it. It's putting ancient wisdom for modern living, applying it to modern contexts. So um, how to deal with things that are out of your control and just live life more practically, um, dealing with things that are in your control and making a real impact in your life um, for you, for those around you and just living with less stress, man. Um, let me see if I can find a quote. Here we go. We have a strange tendency to worry about and concentrate our energies on precisely those we cannot control, those things we cannot control. On the contrary, the Stoics say we should pay attention to the parameters in life's equation that we do control or influence, making sure that we have embarked on a voyage we really want to make and for good reasons to focus our attention and efforts where we have the most power and then let the universe run as it will. And I couldn't have summed it up better myself. And it's especially useful today um, where everything seems flailing and out of our control. Um, I would really recommend it. I've told about 74 of my friends to read it. Well, I don't have 74 friends. Um, <laughs> zero have read it yet, but I'll keep pestering them. And I would recommend that you read it too. Hope that gave you a bit more of an insight into what an editorial assistant might do. I'm leaving Alice's details in the description below, so do check her pages out. And thank you for watching.